Hi everyone, today's lesson is how to deal with negative exponents. Grab your lesson worksheet. If you don't have it, take out a sheet of loose leaf paper and a pencil. You may need a calculator too, and let's get started. Here's the problem. We are going to write each expression using a positive exponent and then evaluate the expression. So what you want to remember is that you never ever want to have a negative exponent. So in order to change them, it's as simple as moving the term across the fraction bar. And that will make sense as soon as I show you these examples. If I start out with our first example, which is three to the negative second power, the first thing we wanna do, step one, is we wanna write this as a fraction if necessary. So three to the negative second power is clearly not a fraction. If I wanna turn it into a fraction, I'm just gonna put it over top of one. Right, we'll always put a one in the denominator. Okay, now, we want this exponent of negative two to become a positive two. So what I need to do is just take it from the numerator and move it to the denominator. Once I do that, that negative exponent is gonna change into a positive, which is exactly what I want. Now I can take this one step further and I can actually evaluate this because three to the second power can be simplified into nine, right? Three times three is nine. Okay, our next example. Now this time we've got a fraction to begin with, so we're good. Okay, what's not good is this negative exponent. We don't want negative two to be a negative exponent, we want that to be positive. Since it started out in the denominator, we're gonna move it up to the numerator. Once I do that, the negative two turns into a positive two. In my denominator, I can put a one as a placeholder. It's not really necessary, right? For our first example, it was necessary because we can't have an empty numerator, but we can have an empty denominator. Five to the second power equals 25, and if I had 25 over one, that would simplify as just 25. All right, so just remember, when you have a negative exponent, you don't want your exponent to be negative. I always tell my students, you don't want him to be negative, you want him to be positive. So just move him, right? Once he moves somewhere else, it turns him into a positive guy. Okay, here's some more examples. We're gonna take this a step further. Now let's think about those rules that we learned um, when we were doing our rules of exponents in one of our previous lessons. If I have a multiplication problem, I am going to keep the base and I'm gonna add the exponents, right? Negative six plus two is negative four. All right, I don't want a negative exponent, so I'm gonna put it over top of a one. Now, if I want my exponent to turn into a positive exponent, I'm gonna move it from the numerator down to the denominator. Once I move it down, it becomes positive. And then I put a placeholder in my numerator because I don't want that to be empty. And this expression would simplify into one over n to the positive fourth. Okay, this time we have a division problem. So I'm gonna keep my base, which is a two. I'm gonna subtract these exponents. Five minus eight is negative three. I'm gonna turn this into a fraction, right? Because I don't wanna have a negative exponent, right? I want that negative exponent to be a positive. So let's make this a fraction first. If I have an exponent of negative three and I want it to be positive, I'm gonna move it from the numerator down to the denominator. I'm gonna put a one as my placeholder. Now this can be simplified, right? Two to the third power can be simplified. Two times two times two equals eight. So when I evaluate this expression and I simplify it completely, it's going to equal one over eight. All right, our next example, we have x to the seventh divided by x to the 12th. So we are gonna keep our base. We're gonna subtract our exponents. That gives us negative five. Again, I do not want to have a negative exponent. So let's make it a fraction. Since my negative five is in the numerator, if I want that exponent to turn into a positive five, I simply move it to the denominator, make it positive. Put a one as my placeholder in the numerator, and my simplified expression is one over x to the positive fifth. 
For our last example, we have a multiplication problem all with the same base, so let's keep that base of 9. When I add negative 2 plus 7, I get 5, and 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. I don't want a negative exponent, so let's make it a fraction. To make my negative 3 positive, I'm going to move it down to the denominator. Put a 1 in the numerator as my placeholder. Now because this isn't an expression with a variable, I can simplify it. 9 to the third power is 729. So my simplified expression is 1 over 729. Sometimes they may ask you to write your answer with a positive exponent, and then you would just stop here, right? 1 over 9 to the third. But if they ask you to evaluate it, that means figure it out. So actually find out what it equals. Okay, let's move on to our next set. Okay, this is an important rule. Exponents are only attached to the number or variable right before it. Okay, that is a very, very important thing to remember. So when I look at this first expression of 4x to the negative third power, this negative 3 is only attached to the x. It is not attached to the 4. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this problem here. I've got 4x to the negative third power, and I'm going to write it as a fraction. Now, this negative 3 is only attached to the x. So if I want to change my negative exponent into a positive, I'm going to move it down to the bottom with the x. So that moved down to the bottom, which leaves me with this 4 on top. Just bring it over. So that's how we would simplify that expression. This next example, they are um, asking us to evaluate, right? 9x to the negative second, and they're telling us that x equals 6. So I'm going to first of all substitute that 6 into my expression. And I always like to put that in parentheses. Okay, now I'm going to make it a fraction. And we're going to get rid of that negative exponent, right? Because we don't want our exponent to be negative. We want it to be positive. The negative 2 is only attached to the 6. So if I'm going to move it down to the denominator, the 6 comes with it, but not the 9. This 9 is just going to stay on top. All right, now we can evaluate this. So I'm going to go down here. So 9 over and 6 to the second power is 36. And then I can simplify 9 over 36 to 1 over 4. So my simplified expression for the second example is 1 over 4. All right, this next one, I'm going to rewrite the problem. So we have 5x to the negative fourth over 6 to the negative first. Okay, now, this is already a fraction, right? So I didn't have to put it over 1 because it's already a fraction. This negative 4 is only attached to that x. So when I want to make this positive, I'm going to move it down to the denominator, and I'm going to bring the x with it. So now it's x to the fourth power. This 6 to the negative first power needs to move to the numerator now, because I don't want an exponent of negative 1. I want that to be positive 1. So I'm going to move my 6 to the first power up here. But let's not forget about this 5, right? There was also a 5 on the top here, and that means I multiply it. 6 to the first power times 5 is 30. And then x to the fourth is just going to stay the same. So my simplified expression is going to be 30 over x to the fourth. All right, my last example. This one, again, is already written as a fraction, right? But I'm just going to copy it down. So we have 3x to the negative second times y on the top. And then on the bottom, we have 2y to the negative third. All right, let's look at our negative exponents and let's move them where they need to go. This x to the negative second is on the top. I want to make it positive, so I'm going to put it on the bottom and I'm going to make it x to the second. This y to the negative third needs to be positive. I'm going to move it on top. I'm going to change that negative 3 into a 3. All right, so I did this one, and I did this one. I'm just going to cross them out so we know we already did them. Now up on the top here, I'm left with this 3. So I'm going to put a times 3 here. And I'm also left with this y. Right? I'm going to do this in white so you can see it. On the bottom, I'm left with this 2. 
So I want to make sure I don't forget about the things that were already there, right? We're so interested in what we're moving back and forth. Let's not forget about the things that are already there. On the top, I have a y to the third times a three times another y. So let's do the number first. There's three. And if I have a y to the third times another y, right? That's really like a y to the first right there. It's going to be y to the fourth on top. And on the bottom, if I have an x to the second times a 2, that's just going to be a 2x to the second. So there is my simplified expression. Okay, let's move on to the last two examples. Now, this is just something a little, um, it's actually just something that's important, right? And that is when there's a negative sign inside the parentheses, right? I'm going to highlight this whole thing. When there's a negative sign inside the parentheses, it's attached to the number or variable. When there's a negative sign in front of a number, right, without parentheses, it means the opposite of the number or the variable. So this first example means negative 2 to the negative fourth power. This negative sign sticks with that 2, right? It is a negative 2. This example means the opposite of 2 to the negative fourth power. So those are two completely different things. All right, I'm going to start out by writing this as a fraction, because that's what we've been doing throughout this lesson. I'm going to put it over 1. Okay, if I want this negative 4 to turn into a positive 4, I'm going to move it down to the denominator, and this whole number sticks with it, including the negative sign, right, because it's in parentheses. I'm going to put a 1 as a placeholder in my numerator. Now, when I evaluate this, I'm doing negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Four negative 2s are going to give me a positive 16. Now, this example is completely different because this means the opposite of, right? Whenever you have the negative sign in front of a number without parentheses, this isn't a negative 2. This means the opposite of 2 to the negative fourth power. So the first thing that we would do is we would just do the 2 to the negative fourth power. Put it over 1. If I want this negative exponent to be positive, I'm going to move it to the denominator. Put a 1 as a placeholder. And 1 over 2 to the fourth power just equals 1 over 16, which we know. However, this right here means the opposite of whatever this answer is. So it's got to come down, and the opposite of 1 16th is negative 1 16th. So the answer to this problem is negative 1 over 16. So that's the difference. This one means negative 2. This one means the opposite of 2. Okay, so hopefully these examples help you to understand negative exponents. Um, if you are feeling confused, go back and watch the video again. And of course, I always recommend and encourage you to ask your teacher if you need any help. I'll see you next time.